everyone. I welcome you to CEC lecture series. I am Nupur Chavla, teaching English literature at Maitri College, Delhi University. And today's lecture is part of the ongoing series on English poetry. Uh, the title of the lecture is African American Poetry Langston Hughes. Now, right at the outset, you might have a question in mind that the series is on English poetry and we are discussing African American poetry. As has been discussed even before, that uh, when we talk about English poetry or English fiction, etc., what we mean is not only uh, you know texts written by the British writers or poets, but also those texts which are originally composed in English also form part of this uh, you know a style of writing. So uh, we are going to discuss today a seminal African American poet that is Langston Hughes. Uh, those of you who have heard about uh, jazz poetry, who have heard about uh, you know the Harlem Renaissance, you would have come across uh, you know uh, the reference to uh, Langston Hughes. So uh, let us uh, you know uh, see a bit, uh, know a bit about the poet, and then uh, we are also going to discuss uh, one of the very famous poems by uh, Langston Hughes today, uh, which is titled. The Negro Speaks of Rivers, right? Uh, but let us uh, uh, see, uh, 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 get to know a bit about the poet's background. Now, Langston Hughes was uh, born in 1901 and was around until 1967. So, which means that he is a poet of the early 20th century, right? And he was a pioneering figure in African American literature. Now, he was born in Missouri, US. And he also he wrote poetry, novels, short stories, newspaper columns, and at times he also composed operas as well. So whenever we talk about African American literature, Langston Hughes is always a reference that comes in. Now um, let's first also understand that what do we mean by you know African American? Uh, it means that you know uh, those writers who have some connection with um, Africa either by means of ancestors right or they have uh, you know maybe uh, migrated etc but African American means that those who are perhaps born in America but they trace their roots to Africa somewhere so that's what makes them African American right um, now, if we talk about uh, Hughes' sensibilities as a poet, right? Uh, what are the issues that uh, were important to him as a person, and most importantly, what were the conditions which uh, you know kind of um, uh, impacted this poet uh, when he was growing up, and which then shaped his thought and ultimately his works as well. So, if we think of that. Uh, we go back to his childhood, right? So he spent most of his childhood with his maternal grandmother who had married a man who actively supported the abolitionist cause and she herself also supported the cause. Now what do we mean by abolitionist cause? Abolitionist cause means that uh, you know uh, we all are aware that um, in uh, um, America uh, the slave trade was very, very, uh, you know, uh, common um, until uh, just the other day, right? So uh, within the country, there were those who then were in favor or or were working towards abolishing uh, uh, abolishing uh, slavery, right? And um, ensuring that uh, because of course it was a very it was a deeply inhuman practice where just somebody by virtue of being uh, of, a, of a particular skin color, right, uh, I mean exercised their right to hold, uh, you know, these Africans as slaves. So this inhuman practice has of course been widely written about in history, literature, art, etc. Um, and of course, there have been very, very strong political movements as well around this issue, around this historical issue. So um, 
this was uh, you know also particularly active uh, or uh, you know alive this issue was alive in the early 20th century we will go a bit into the history of this as well but uh, for now we need to understand that langston hughes's grandmother who was the person that brought him up uh, also supported the abolitionist cause right so with these values we understand how hughes grew up on stories about racial pride right this was the solid foundation on which his secular sensibilities developed because that's what he grew up listening to right about racial pride about pride in being um, an african american uh, about, you know pride in their uh, uh, race in their ancestry why because this pride was one of the ways to counter white supremacy in the us right so this is the uh, i would say uh, the background in which he grows up and therefore these uh, thoughts and values come to shape uh, langston hughes as well um now as he grew up uh, he uh, as a young man he uh, studied at columbia university the very famous university that we all are aware of in new york and he lived in harlem but over there he faced discrimination from a white majority environment at the university and he started writing poems therefore very early so what we see is that not only were his sensibilities shaped by his interactions with his grandmother um about uh, you know the abolitionist cause but at the same time he also um uh, you know as a young man himself had a first hand experience of being discriminated against because of uh, you know his um, african ancestry so all these conditions shaped langston hughes into the poet that he became right um, now if we see his works his first poem which also came to be one of the most famous ones and that's also the one that we are going to discuss today is titled the negro speaks of rivers and it was published in 1921 so which means that langston hughes is the poet of the early 20th century and his first book of poems is called the weary blues that was published in 1926 now you might wonder what is the word blues mean i mean i'm sure a lot of you um i mean some of you might already be aware of that there is this genre that we uh, you know refer to as jazz uh, jazz and blues so uh, uh, this is a particular uh, you know form of music um in which uh, the content is of course poetry and it is the poetry written by the african americans uh, about their experience it is colloquial uh, in language right uh, it also has a lot of oral elements it uses um, a slang etc so uh, perhaps one can say that uh, the title of his first book of poetry the weary blues could perhaps also be a reflection of uh, you know the kind of uh, 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 genre that he had also adapted now hughes's work contributed to the movement in 1920s which is called as the harlem renaissance right now we cannot talk about langston hughes without really understanding what do we mean by the harlem renaissance um now this was of course a literary cultural movement that uh, flourished in uh, the 1920s in uh, the us right and uh, that is exactly so um Langston Hughes I said we cannot talk about his works without understanding the concept of the Harlem Renaissance. Now Harlem Renaissance was a literary cultural movement uh, that was uh, you know uh, that that flourished in uh, the 1920s and uh, it was a very important um, I would say um, it provided an important backdrop to uh, hughes's work as well so one can say it was a cultural political movement right uh, so what exactly was harlem renaissance let's um, uh, look at that but before this let us take a look at the poet now this is on your screens uh, langston hughes um was born in 1901 
and was around till 1967, which is the mid of the uh, 20th century, right. Um, now, moving on, having looked at the poet and uh, you know his background, let us understand what do we mean by or what exactly is this cultural movement, the Harlem Renaissance. Now, it was a social, intellectual, artistic movement that flourished in Harlem, New York City between 1920s and 1930s. So, we say it is a social, intellectual, artistic movement. Now, what do these words imply? Social movement because at the base of this movement were the social issues. Which social issues? Of discrimination against the blacks. Intellectual movement. Why? Because it also produced certain thinkers. It produced certain, uh, you know, ideas which were uh, you know, um, uh, against or, or anti-slavery and, pr and uh, pro-abolition. So, there were also a lot of ideas that were, uh, you know, uh, generated uh, during this movement. An artistic movement. Artistic, why? Because different arts flourished around this time, which became the mode through which the method, uh, 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 through which the message of this movement was communicated and one such uh, mode of expression was of course poetry which was uh, you know also written by Langston Hughes right. Now, let us understand that uh, uh, a bit about the historical uh, you know relevance of the Harlem Renaissance. Now, you see um, there was a great migration of the African Americans from the southern states to the northern part of the country, right. Uh, we all are aware that the southern states in America were the slave owning states. That is where uh, or, or the, or the slave holding states as they say, um, because that is where uh, you know slavery was um, officially allowed. People supported the cause and um, those in the north were against it. They felt that as a practice it is unjustified, right. So, um, after the uh, American Civil War which was uh, which, which lasted from 1861 to 1865, right, after the um, uh, American Civil War, um, you know the African Americans uh, even as that led to uh, the uh, abolition of slavery. Um, it was in a positive direction, but still as they say that uh, you know trends, social trends they take time to uh, change. So, we saw that uh, you know people uh, continued to discriminate against the African Americans, continued to you know follow uh, the, pa the, uh, the practice of social segregation where you know separate spaces were designated for the African Americans and the whites then uh, were uh, would not enter those areas. So, uh, and, and you know even the basic civil rights, uh, the basic human rights continued to be uh, impacted um, uh, of the African Americans. So, when uh, this continued as a practice even after the American Civil War. Uh, the African Americans they um, uh, you know uh, migrated from the southern states to the northern parts of the country uh, you know in um, hope for uh, uh, establishing or starting out a better life which is um, against discrimination or, or which is which is not colored by uh, discrimination right. Uh, so, we said that you know the white supremacists they were exerting control in the, in the southern states. They denied civil rights and basic advancement to the, to the black community even though officially slavery was abolished, but in society it was yet to be practiced. In society the change was yet to be witnessed, right. There was still no opportunity for advancement for the black community. There was um, you know uh, uh, segregation, there was a discrimination etc. So, this caused uh, them to move north in search of uh, better living conditions and an environment that would be conducive to growth and advancement, right. 
Now, this spirit informed a number of writings and cultural expressions that were based on racial pride, right? Now, because, uh, you know, the uh, African Americans were um, rallying against this kind of a socio-cultural and political uh, bias that continued even after abolition of slavery, they got together, the African Americans got together to assert themselves. And it is this assertion, right, the, uh, uh, in, uh, in the form of writings, in the form of uh, cultural expressions, in the form of what I just now called jazz poetry, right, all of these then together informed what we uh, call as the Harlem Renaissance, right. Now, um, one of the anthologies is very, very important uh, of this uh, literary cultural movement that is Alan Locke's anthology called The New Negro. Now this was a cornerstone of the Harlem Renaissance and it carried works of black writers and poets including those of Langston Hughes. So The New Negro was uh, the anthology that carried thoughts, expressions of the uh, black writers. And our poet Langston Hughes also contributed to this anthology. So this uh, tells us that, you know, uh, the kind of churning that was happening in the African American uh, context at that point of time. Now, the unique feature of these writings that were part of this anthology was that they represented African American culture, they gave voice to their identity, and they forged a strong sense of community amongst the African Americans. So these three, I would say, uh, ideals or goals commonly, uh, you know, united all these writings. A, they represented African culture. Now you might ask that how does representation of culture help at a time when, uh, you know, uh, the African Americans were uh, 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 kind of trying to fight against uh, this bias because when you talk about your culture, when you represent your culture, you A, get a sense of identity. You solidify your identity that this is the culture that I come from and this is who I am. At another level, uh, expression of the culture also becomes one of the ways to assert themselves that they are not barbaric, quite unlike or quite the opposite of what the white population would make everyone believe, that the blacks were barbaric and therefore they were treated the way they were, uh, 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 they were treated by the whites, right? A very wrong justification. So as a counter to that then, you know, there was an assertion of African American culture, that they also have their culture their values, their beliefs, their uh, ways of expression, their way of thought, which was equally developed as that of the white man's. So these writings then which appeared in the anthology The New Negro or The New Negro, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, carried uh, 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 representations of American culture, gave voice to African American uh, identity. What was it? or what did it mean to be an African American and a thirdly, it also forged a strong sense of community amongst them. Now, these were the reasons or these were one can say the uh, defining features of the writings uh, that were, uh, that came out in this anthology during the Harlem Renaissance. Now, you see themes of these writings also included a sense of pride which was embodied in the idea of the new Negro. Now, this is a phrase which has come to define the Harlem Renaissance also. What do we mean by the new Negro? Now, look at the word new. New why? Because now uh, the African Americans are emerging out of bondage and asserting themselves for the first time. 
right? Slavery having been abolished, now they are rallying for much needed civil rights, human rights, a sense of dignity, living life with a sense of, uh, you know, uh, uh, respect and justice, right? Uh, asserting themselves, having pride in their culture, um, forging a sense of community amongst the um, other African Americans. All these were now the values that had come to define the African American, which was after the uh, uh, American Civil War, after the slavery was abolished. So all these, uh, you know, uh, values or thoughts were then summarized in the phrase the new Negro and these writings then included, uh, you know, um, all the values that are embodied in this term, right? And this term was of course uh, uh, popularized during the Harlem Renaissance. Now, it, now this term also signified the African American who by means of creativity and intellect subverted racial stereotypes, creating an alternate empowered discourse. So Harlem Renaissance then is a movement whereby the African Americans by means of using their creativity and intellect, they subverted the racial stereotypes and they created an alternate empowered discourse. And what did this alternate empowered discourse comprise? A sense of pride in themselves, a sense of identity, uh, a sense of uh, community, etc. Right? And this, therefore, you know, brought back uh, the black experience in the American cultural sphere. Right? With this uh, movement, what happened was that black experience, which was so far, uh, uh, you know, relegated to the margins, was considered as unimportant, was seen as, uh, you know, uh, 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 maybe, you know, not worthy of, uh, of being in the mainstream. All these, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of pre-existing stereotypes were then called to question during this point of time. So in this lecture, what we have seen is A, we have understood the background of uh, Langston Hughes, uh, the kind of conditions that, uh, you know, impacted his thought when he was growing up, um, how he was surrounded by grandparents that, were that believed in abolitionist cause and that also shaped his uh, secular sensibilities. Then as he grew up, he, uh, his first-hand experience of uh, discrimination also further made him, uh, you know, uh, uh, side with the cause of uh, uh, justice and, uh, you know, uh, thinking of uh, 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 reviving the African-American uh, culture and context in its, uh, in its real sense. And third, uh, we said that, you know, we cannot uh, do justice to Langston Hughes' poetry unless we understand what do we mean by the Harlem Renaissance because Langston Hughes being the um, poet of early 20th century uh, directly subscribed to this uh, social cultural movement and we looked at some of the features of the Harlem Renaissance and towards the end we highlighted that how the term new negro right uh, that uh, uh, became a watchword or a catchword or a one can say a dis, um, a defining or a characteristic phrase of this particular movement, right? And uh, we also discussed that why the word new, because uh, this was the first time that the Africans were asserting themselves, right? Uh, so we see that, you know, how history, culture, politics, it all comes together when we talk about the African American poetry. And the poems that they wrote were in English, um, definitely, the kind of English was different because um, it was a dialect, the African American dialect. It had a slang, right? Um, but then it was uh, informed by the issues of pride, um, identity, a sense of community, a sense of culture, right? 
So all these uh, 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 themes and thoughts that we have discussed just now, we are now going to apply them and see, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when, we, when we discuss next uh, the poem by Langston Hughes, which is his first and one, and one of the most popular poems, that is The Negro Speaks of Rivers. When we discuss that poem, you will see that how all these ideas, all these thoughts, all these themes that we have talked about, in fact, even the sensibility that we have discussed of Langston Hughes as a poet will come to, uh, uh, you know, um, I would say uh, fruition in the work that we are going to discuss next. Thank you.